We are still praying every week for all of you at staff meetings. So please, if you have praises or prayer requests, email them to info at northsoundchurch.com or any of the pastors on staff. We would love to pass that along to staff. Um, we have a new group starting, it's Anxious for Nothing. This will be a Tuesday night Zoom group. So if you would like to join us for that, um, feel free to email me, Jessica O at northsoundchurch.com and I can give you more information. We will be starting uh, opening up the sanctuary in the Little White Church on Tuesdays and Thursdays for prayer. So if you would like to come Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 to 1, um, the sanctuary doors will be open and you can just have a time of silence in the chapel there. Nancy still has space in her care group. If anyone is looking for a care group, she would love to have you join her. Feel free to send her an email. Friends, we are so excited to have another all-church prayer meeting on Zoom. This will be happening this next Wednesday at 7 p.m. The link will be on the website and available for everyone at 6 p.m. Also, you will get an email. Nourishing Network is still looking for people to help pack lunches and meals for the families in the Edmonds School District. If you have free time to volunteer, you can reach out to Jean Dorgie and she would love to help get you connected. Today's scripture reading is from Psalms 103, 2 through 11. It is a congregational scripture reading, so please read with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your inequities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let's pray. Your name is great. We praise you for your grace over us in our lives. We turn to you in this time of unknown and trust that you are good, your good, good Father. We pray that as we draw closer to you, you will draw closer to us in these times. That as we feel distracted or distant, you will be close. For those that are grieving and mourning and suffering, we pray that you comfort them just as you always have. We choose in these uncertain times to trust you and lean on you and not on our own understanding. But we acknowledge you to lead us on the path that you have set before us. We confess that we're not always opening our eyes to the problems of the world, but we pray that you will guide us and lead us to do the right thing in these hard times. We lift up all of the needs we have in our own lives to you, and we pray that you will insert yourself in those situations that we can see your glory and miracles in the world today. We thank you for the prayer that you've taught your disciples and us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Well, good morning, North Sound Church. It's so good to see you this morning. Thank you for joining us once again for worship today. Then I also want to, in addition to my greetings to all of you, send out a special greeting to Bob Campbell, my friend, and a part of the North Sound family. Bob and Cece have been here for many years. Bob turns 80 years of age today. So wherever you are at home, you can uh, give a clap or sing happy birthday if you want to, to Bob Campbell. Congratulations on that, Bob. And Bob is an amazing guy. Last year at 79, he was on his motorcycle exploring uh, parts of uh, Alberta, Canada, where his family came from. Uh, pretty amazing guy and great to have Bob and Cece in the North Sound family. Then I also just wanna highlight the fact that the online prayer meeting is happening this Wednesday evening at seven o'clock. Please join us. You can do so by Zooming uh, and we'll have a link on the website on Wednesday and we'll plan to send you a link via email if we have your email address as well. And uh, it's just an opportunity to join in in this season in prayer. There's so many things for us to remember in prayer. And we have prayer meetings scheduled for this Wednesday and then the last Wednesday in August as well. We hope you'll join us for those. And then finally, just a reminder, this is Communion Sunday. And so if you haven't yet gotten your communion elements together at the end of the sermon this morning, we're going to have communion together. So you may wanna take a moment uh, and get your communion elements prepared. Well, we're doing a series called Living with a Limp, and today we're going to talk about the land between. Have you ever spent time in a desert? I have. Uh, one of my early assignments as a chaplain with uh, VMAQ-4, Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 4, was at a CAX, a combined arms exercise at Camp Wilson, which is an extension of the base at 29 Palms, California. This was at the end of June, early July. It was a very hot time in the desert. I saw the desert up close and personal like I never had before. We had to scour around to try and find cardboard because the sand was the floor in our hooch and we didn't want to get sand in our socks before going into our boots. It was a pretty hot environment there. We had MREs for lunch, meals ready to eat, and they actually weren't so bad. We had the head that in this case was what they call a hardened head. Uh, that's bathroom uh, for those of you that are not in the, uh, in, have an experience in the military uh, with of course no doors on the stalls. So you very quickly uh, lose uh, some sense of modesty there. Um, it, was, uh, it was an outdoor mess where we had our, our dinner in the evening, but thankfully some hot food then. And uh, as I mentioned, the, the constant the heat was, a, was an ongoing companion. And to tell you the truth, I was very glad to leave the desert. A number of years ago, I heard a pastor, Jeff Mannion, talk about the desert. He talked about it as the land between, and I'm going to borrow that expression this morning because I, I really think that describes what was going on in Moses' life as we continue in this series to look at some, some instances of God's work in his life. And so we see him in the desert in the land between in Exodus chapter three, we read these words. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Now, this sort of uh, story continues interestingly in the book of Acts in the New Testament. And Stephen, before he was martyred, um, gave something of a history of Israel. And this is what he said about Moses. He said, when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them being wronged, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. So an Egyptian was, was, um, was assaulting uh, a, a, a Jew uh, at that time and Moses saw this happening. He supposed that his brothers would understand that God was giving them salvation by his hand, but they did not understand. And on the following day, he appeared to them as they were quarreling and tried to reconcile them saying, men, you are brothers, why do you wrong each other? But the man who was wronging his neighbor thrust him aside saying, who made you a <coughs> ruler and judge over us? Do you wanna kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? At this retort, Moses fled 
and became an exile in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. Now, when 40 years had passed, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in a flame, in a fire of a bush. Now, Moses found himself in a desert in the land between. Now, think of it. He lived a life of luxury as a son of Pharaoh. And then we know, because we know the story, that he eventually would lead his people in freedom. But in the meantime, he was in exile. He was in the land between. And he was 40 years of age when this happened. And it's interesting because he didn't know that he was going to be in the land between for another 40 years. We know because we know the end of the story, but he didn't know that. Friends, I want to ask you, do you know the desert? Do you know the land between? In this time of COVID-19, you may feel like you're, you're there right now. And frankly, I think all of us do. We ask those questions, when is this going to be over? I'm tired of this journey. Many of us are saying we want to get back to normal. I got to tell you, as your pastor, I miss seeing you. It's been about five months now, and I'm hoping that the end is in sight. I uh, saw today that there's a possibility of a vaccine later this fall, and I'm certainly hoping and encourage you to pray that that will be the case and be a game changer for us. Friends, there are many deserts in our lives, and we don't like to stay in them either. Uh, they really are the land between for each one of us. For the retail merchant in Edmonds, it might be the land between is very few sales during the lockdown and struggling even now with masks and everything to catch up. For the marriage, the land between may be the realization that what began with romance and passion is now becoming a contest of wills. For the parent, it may be the compliant child who has now reached adolescence and is pushing every boundary. For the retired person, it might be the excitement of entering into the third third of life and discovering there may be some medical condition that could affect that time. My friend Rick Tricano, the name that you probably have not heard. My friend Rick Tricano was in the land between when in his senior year of college, <clears throat> he was looking forward to a great year as the quarterback of the Pitt Panthers and playing in the NFL following that year. But that year when Rick was a senior, Pitt recruited a young rookie who was an amazing football player whose name was Dan Marino. Rick found himself in the land between. I think we've all known the land between. Many of us ask, I think, four questions about our time in the land between. The first one is, why am I in the land between? <clears throat> Sometimes we're in the land between because we blew it. This was the case for Moses. He murdered an Egyptian and he had to escape for his life. Sin has consequences and sometimes those consequences put us in the land between. Have you ever made mistakes in your life that put you into the land between? I have, I have done some really dumb things in my life. In one case, I did a dumb thing. It caused me to lose a ministry position I had been in for some 19 years. And along with that, the consequences of embarrassment and fear about what was gonna happen to my future. In that case, I had no full-time job immediately to go into. I was a Navy Reserve chaplain still, and so I, I made cards, business cards, at my own expense so that when I would be asked about what I did, I could give a card that at least gave some credence to the fact that I was employed because I was so embarrassed with my situation. On the other hand, friends, there are occasions when we find ourselves in the land between when we didn't blow it. We didn't make those mistakes. As the, the old bumper used to say, stuff happens and sometimes it affects us. Jesus reminded us in Matthew 5, 45, that the rain falls on the good and the bad alike. Bad things do happen to good people in this world. Op-eds in newspapers are those places where people have an opportunity to, to share their opinion. 
And the New York Times is a place that, of course, is well known nationally. And the New York Times op-ed editor uh, featured the words of a senator, U.S. senator, that the, the content of which his friends, his colleagues at the Times didn't like, and he ended up losing his job for simply expressing uh, what he thought he was supposed to do, and that was a variance of opinion in the newspaper. But as a result, he found himself in the land between. However we get there, it's usually not too much fun in the desert in the land between. I think one of the other questions that most of us ask when we feel we're in the land between is where is God in this? Where's God in the desert? Where's God in the land between? You may recall the rather old and now and <coughs> Warren poem called Footsteps. I still like it. Uh, Footsteps, for those of you that have never heard it, tells the story in beautiful poetry of uh, footprints in the sand and the individual that's describing this talks about the footprints in the sand being God's footprints and his footprints and describes the fact that when he looks at life and he sees the footprints, when he was going through a particularly difficult time in life, there was only one set of footprints. And he asks in this poem, God, why was it that when I was going through the most difficult pieces of life, in what we're talking about, the land between, there was only one set of footprints. And God replies to his query and says, my beloved one, you need to know that when there was only one set of footprints, it was me, it was my footprints because I was carrying you. Perhaps footprints was so popular because it is indeed true. God is with us at all times, but he's especially there when the going gets rough and even when we don't sense it, he is with us. In Deuteronomy 32 and verse 10, we find that God is at work with his people even in the desert. We read there, he found him in a desert land and in the howling waste of the wilderness. He encircled him, he cared for him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. The expression here, apple of his eye, is probably more literally translated the little man of his eye, namely the pupil of the eye, the part that, of our bodies that we probably are most sensitive to and want to protect the most. And here we see that he shielded him, he cared for him, he guarded him. But notice they were still in the desert. Sometimes God delivers us out of the desert, the land between, quickly. But other times, he promises to be with us in that challenging time in our lives. Friends, Americans are impatient sufferers. Philip Yancey tells of being invited to speak in Asia. Philip Yancey wrote, uh, Where is God When It Hurts? He wrote a book called Disappointment with God. And so he's written a lot on the topic uh, along these lines of dealing with suffering. And so he asked the, his hosts in Asia if they would like him to talk about suffering. And they said, oh no, here in Asia, we know what it is to suffer. We've got suffering down. We would like you to talk about relationships. Friends, in the land between, we need to know in our suffering that God is at work. It's interesting when we see from uh, First Kings, uh, or Second Kings uh, 6, verse 15 and following, we have the story of Elisha and his servant and how the forces of God were with them, but the servant didn't see that that was happening. Beginning at verse 15, when the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, alas, my master, what shall we do? He said, do not be afraid for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. God was there all the time. He just needed eyes to see. One of the beautiful pieces of art that we have in our world is that of a tapestry. 
I can remember as a young man in the National Geographic, I believe, seeing the Bayou Tapestry. And the Bayou Tapestry uh, was a tapestry that was done of the Battle of Hastings, the Norman conquest of England. And it was an amazing tapestry that showed the battle progressing. Tapestries are interesting because they're so beautiful on one side in the story that they tell in the art and the image they give. But if you ever looked at the other side, the other side has the, 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 the strings and, and the, the things that have been tied off and the, the yarn and all of that stuff on the other side. It, it makes no sense at all. It looks pretty bad. And friends, I think sometimes in our lives, the problem is God is working a beautiful tapestry, but we're kind of on the wrong side and, and we don't see the work and the completion of what he's doing. And that brings us to our next point, and that is what is God doing in our lives in the desert, in the land between? Well, for one thing, he's building trust. Have you noticed that it's in the rough times of life that we lean into the Lord, we develop our relationship further, we lean into trusting him, and that when life is good, we have a tendency not to go that direction. But in fact, when life is good, we go a different direction, and we, we don't need to trust him the way that we do in those challenging times in our lives. We have in the scriptures in Psalm chapter 40, verses one to five, these words. I waited patiently for the Lord, he inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet on a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell them, yet they are more than can be told. In growing our character, God sometimes leads us, walks with us through the challenging experiences of life. Discipleship, friends, is not just a class. We would like to think it was just as easy as learning a few points about theology, but in fact, it's a journey and God is with us in the journey and he helps us to grow more like the Lord as we respond to the crisis of our lives. We read this in Deuteronomy chapter eight, and you shall remember the whole way that your Lord God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know. Nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. In this passage, we see that God sometimes uses pain to discipline us, pain for change. In my generation, we used to exercise pain for change. We called it corporal punishment or more commonly known as spanking. We swatted the backsides of our boys when they needed some pain for change. But unfortunately, this has fallen into disrepute nowadays, and it seemed to work pretty good when pain encouraged change. But it's interesting, we read in the next couple of verses about God's discipline. He says, your clothing did not wear out and your food did, foot did not swell these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. We want our children to grow up and be good people. God disciplines his children that we would be like him. And it's interesting, have you ever noticed how much God uses broken people? This week, one of the devotionals that I, that I heard talked about God as the potter. You may re remember that wonderful picture that we have in scripture of the potter working the vessel. I don't know if you've ever seen a potter's wheel and the, the clay and the water and the working of that vessel. And sometimes it just doesn't work out well. It's just not the way that it should be. But instead of taking that clay and throwing it away, the potter simply begins over again and reworks the vessel into something of beauty. 
That's the promise that we have is that God the potter is molding our lives through the experiences of our lives to make us into the people that he wants us to be. At North Sound Church, we have affirmed the value of brokenness. We believe that it's important for us to experience brokenness to know the presence of God. Brokenness leads to humility. Moses experienced this brokenness and humility in his own life. We read in Numbers chapter 12, these words, Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses, they asked? Hasn't he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. And here's the special part right here. This is in brackets in, our, in the scriptural passage. It says, now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of of the earth. Friends, humility isn't necessarily something that we're born with, but brokenness in our lives leads us to that beautiful place of humility. And so friends, in the land between, God is preparing us for a mission. The children of Israel spent 40 years in the desert training for taking the promised land. And when confronted with a challenge, God's way is not to tell us to try harder, it's not to tell us just to suck it up, but it's rather to learn through these experiences to train and to prepare so that these challenges today prepare us for the mission that is ahead of us. I mentioned earlier my involvement with VMAQ-4, the Marine EA-6 Prowler Squadron. And uh, one of the things that I discovered as a Navy chaplain working with Marines is that there was a, a Navy physical readiness test and there was a Marine Corps physical readiness test. And in the Navy, every six months, we had to run a mile and a half, do push-ups and sit-ups. But in the Marine Corps, you had to run three miles and you had to do pull-ups. Well, I did not have upper body strength in those days. Well, frankly, I still don't. Uh, but I, I wanted to be the kind of chaplain that they needed. And so I needed to pass their physical readiness requirements rather than my own. And so I got a membership down at Harbor Square and I began to work out on the machines down there that would build my upper body strength. And then I can remember that great day when I was doing the pull-ups with my squadron and um, I got to pull them up and uh, in the pull-ups that I did as I was doing so, I, I made three and my colleagues yelled at me to do one more and I couldn't. I had gotten the three and that was all they could do, all kinds of them. My time with the Marines of VMAQ-4 and MWSS, a Marine Support Squadron, uh, was so wonderful as I had an opportunity to learn and literally to strengthen and grow with them. Moses trained for the land between to be able, in the land between, to be able to accomplish his mission. And his mission was very clear. We read in verse 10, Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And then finally, as we move towards closing this morning, the question that we all ask is, when do I pass through the land between? Don't we all want to know that question? When am I going to pass through the land between? It's another way of saying, when is this going to be over? I think virtually all of us want to be done with this virus thing. We want this to be over. Um, that good news that I mentioned earlier, we really need to pray for that there will be a virus available uh, into the fall because that will change everything for us. We want to be able to get back together because so much of church isn't just watching a sermon online, it's fellowship, it's being together as the body of Christ and ministering to one another, not just listening to a sermon. Moses started his time in the land between at the age of 40 and it went on for another 40 years. He saw the promised land he got the people there and Joshua took them in. Moses accomplished his mission. I was thinking of Joni Erickson Tata who would have loved to have had an experience of healing after, uh, after a dive paralyzed her. And instead, God gave her grace in her suffering and in that grace she has touched the lives of probably so many more than she would have had she lived a different kind of life. Mother Teresa went through the land between when in her autobiography, she tells that she went years faithfully serving without experiencing, feeling the presence of God in her life. She was faithful 
in the land between in spite of that. It's interesting regarding Mother Teresa Mark Hatfield, some of you may remember Senator Mark Hatfield from Oregon, who tells of touring Calcutta with Mother Teresa and going with her to what was called the House of Dying. It was where sick children are cared for in their last days. And uh, they went there and they went to the dispensary where people line up for medical treatment. And Mother Teresa was ministering to these people and, and, and Senator Mark Hatfield was watching her and it was very difficult. She was feeding and, and, and helping people, nursing, providing nursing care and, and comfort to those who were dying. And Hatfield was overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of the suffering that she and her coworkers faced daily. He said to her, Mother Teresa, how can you not be crushed by dealing with this day after day? And this is how she replied. She said, my dear Senator, I am not called to be successful. I am called to be faithful. Friends, regardless of where we are at in the land between, God calls us to be faithful. Usually we don't know how the time in the land, will tween, uh, land between will end um, and when, but for those who are faithful, it will end well. I love the story from many years ago. Uh, the story recalls that in 1883, there were two young men who went to medical school together and they, they differed in both appearance and ambition. Ben was sort of short and stocky and Will was tall and thin. Ben dreamed of practicing medicine in the East while Will wanted to practice in a more rural community. Ben begged his friend to go to New York with him and make lots of money as a doctor there. Will refused and his friend called him foolish for wanting to practice medicine in the Midwest. But Will said this, he said, I want first of all to be a great surgeon, the very best, if I have the ability. And interestingly, years later, the wealthy and the powerful came from all around the world to be treated by Will at his clinic, known as the Mayo Clinic. Friends, God may give us deliverance from the land between quickly, or he may give us the strength to endure, but he is with us regardless. Remember these wonderful promises for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And from Romans, that wonderful reminder, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. And friends, today the cross, which we're going to remember in just a moment in a time of communion. The cross reminds us of the extent of God's love and what he is willing to do as one who never leaves us or forsakes us. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you this morning for the fact that we can learn so much from the lives of others, and in this case, the life of Moses. Moses experienced the desert, the land between, and indeed, we experience that as well. I pray today, Lord, for my brothers and sisters who may be experiencing the land between that you would speak to them and remind them of your presence and your love, that you are with us, each one of us. You love us as if there was only one of us to love. Lord, give us the strength. We pray, Lord, that your hand would be upon our lives and that even as you are with us, may we be with you. May we see, Lord, the kingdom come and your will be done in and through our lives, in our fellowship, and in our community, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Folks, today, if you have been participating with us online and you don't know about the closeness of God's presence, you perhaps have never met him, I wanna encourage you to do so, to make a Christian commitment to choose to follow Jesus. And it's relatively easy to do so, it's just admitting that we're sinners, we express confession and repentance, we turn from those sins, and we commit our way to the Lord, and God has promised to be with us. If you would like to do that, if you would like to have someone pray with you in that regard, you can just email me at North Sound Church. Uh, you can email info at North Sound Church or call the church office, and we'll make sure that someone gets in touch with you. Let's uh, move now to a time of communion together.
Let's join together in the prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may take delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The words from the scripture that we use to remind us of this very special occasion are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And these words describe the admonition to do just this, to remember the Lord's death until he comes. And so we read together, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had broken it, he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. And the scripture says, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's take the cup together. Lord, we thank you today for your body broken for us and for your blood that has been shed for us. Lord, we know that in our lives, in the times of being in a desert, the land between, we, we need your presence. And so we pray today, Lord, that you would be with us. Lord, we need your presence at all times and pray that even as we remember this time together, this time in which your we recognize the fact that your body was broken for us and your blood was shed for us, that that was the extent of your love for us. And Lord, in good times and in challenging times in our lives, remind us of that love we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Friends, thank you for joining us for worship today. Just before we go, just one more announcement regarding the online prayer meeting this Wednesday at 7 p.m. We would love to have you join us. We'll send out a link on Wednesday. We'll also have the link on the church's website so that you'll be able to join us. If for some reason we don't have your email, then just let us know at info at northsoundchurch.com or you can call the church office. May the Lord bless you. Let's be dismissed now with God's blessing. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore, amen.